that, that was the Heat game. Wow. Didn't think I'd be coming on here so soon and talking about a Wizards win in a tense, close situation. It has been a wish of mine, but I was surprised to see it happen so soon after the Blazers game. I really did think that the Heat would, you know, just pick themselves up against us, but instead the Heat played sloppy and we had sloppy moments too, but let's look at the positives. Before we even look at the guy who is definitely, most, li most likely definitely our coach, but like, I just want to pretend he's not for at least two minutes, if that. Rui Hachimura was so aggressive this game, and it was so great to see, especially because there was a moment in the Blazer games that I didn't talk about because I was just ranting last video, but um, I really loved, there was this play when it was close and they were on that comeback and it was about a four point game and they started like, like they passed it to Rui, he was on fire and he kind of hesitates on a three and then everyone was hesitating on the threes. But I've noticed that Rui's done that in like a few games where he's like hesitated. And I think he took the right lesson from that game where when you're hot, you need to go for it. And even though like efficiency wise, he wasn't the most efficient this game, his aggressiveness was key and he was in the paint getting rebounds and attacking and not letting these missed shots get to him. He was having a short memory and it was really great to see him do that and not get caught up in what happened last game. And and hopefully this continues and, and those shots will go down as he's seen. He's seen them go down. Like when you end up shooting like 80% taking, and he was taking sort of the same shots as he was prior it shows you that you can do this obviously there's other people that i would hope don't get inspired by certain decisions they make but 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 rui was doing phenomenal even if he wasn't scoring really the only kind of nitpick i would have with his game right now was the free throws was the free throw shooting and the occasional like and this happens with the entire team but the occasional lack of vision the guy with the vision one of the guys with vision, Denny Avdia. Man is such a good passer. He made passes that didn't result in scores, but you can tell like he can see the entire floor. And a lot of times I think that's why he gets so frustrated because he can see, he, when he's wide open, he throws his hands up and it's like everyone can like, it seems like a lot of the times our guys get tunnel vision and they just start shooting like mid-rangers that are contested. And this is early in the shot clock. This is not like where like some of the moments where like we had two seconds left, it's like, okay, fine. You, the defense forced you to take that shot. Cool. But Denny is such a good passer. He had like one pass from across the court to um, Beal. He was, he had a nice little spin move with Avery Bradley. That may or may not have been a travel, got a dunk. He had a nice, um, Troy Brown Jr. hit him with a nice fine when he was cutting to the rim, and he was attacking, and he just, these threes, man, these threes, oh my goodness. For a guy that was supposedly a shaky three-point shooter, he's kind of only really been shaky on free throws a little bit, but he is performing at a really good level for a rookie, and we really need to find more spaces and pockets where he can run the offense. Like, honestly, you should just let him be the point guard because I'm not fully confident in our point guard Sands Westbrook beyond Neto, maybe. But, like, I really think Denny should get even more of an opportunity to run the offense because he's able to find guys, he's able to score, he's able to play really good defense. Because that was another thing. They weren't calling that stupid foul when the guy bumps Denny like five feet away and they call a foul on Denny. Now there were a couple BS fouls, but they didn't call that for once. So Denny actually got to play for longer than like three minutes. It was great. Of course, last but not least, Bradley Beal did his thing per usual. He's had fourth quarters where his scoring has petered out probably due to him being exhausted. And the fact is, we have a tendency to have him running a lot of dribble handoffs and it's really predictable and we don't really have an offense. Well, we did, to be fair, we did have a lot of cool moments where the ball was whipping and moving. 
I really liked that second three that Beal had at the, in the first quarter when the ball landed in Ishmael's hands and Beal relocated to the three-point line and Ish just fired it right back to him. That was beautiful. There was a lot of moments where like Alex Lynn on the shore will find somebody. And it, it was just nice to have the ball moving. And I wish, I wish we kept doing that. But too many times we have the tendency to get really caught up in trying to make an annual mixtape out of guys. Who else was great? Lynn, Alex Lynn, awesome. It's so nice to have like another big body that is not so slow and lumbering. I'm sorry, Robin Lopez. He just, he's not fast enough to really keep up with these offenses that have a, a faster center. With Lopez, the problem with him, is he's just too slow. He gets beaten a lot and his recovery speed is just awful. So most of the time he ends up fouling and that's the difference with Lynn. Lynn can move, he can be mobile, he can catch a guard. He can't, he can't, you know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna like be able to keep up with him on perimeter. There's a difference between him and Bam out of bio for a reason. Him doing that is better than what Lopez gives us. And I really think he should be getting more minutes as well as another guy. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm teetering on the negatives. I'm almost there. I'm almost there, but I'm teetering on them. Cause Lynn had like, Lynn had good moments in the paint. He was able to sort of deter some, some layups, some shots, which was great. And it's a, it's a different feeling when like someone goes in the paint, it's like, okay. And even at the very end, when I was certain that was a foul, I, if I was a Heat fan, I'm sure like Heat fans right now are like, that was a foul. That's BS. We want our foul back <laughs> we want we, we yeah so yeah it was good to see him doing well and hopefully his good play would look would logically you know logically that would mean he gets more minutes instead of less minutes but yeah we actually we won the game we won this game which somehow the, the feeling of like excitedness that normally comes after victory has not washed over me. I sort of feel like Beal did. And honestly, I think that's how they should feel. How Beal did when they won that crazy Nets game. There's no celebration. We're now 5-13. and 13 And they keep winning, you know. It's just like, it's the, the, we shouldn't, there should not be a let up. Especially if this team wants to make the playoffs. There really should not be any kind of let up. There needs to be a consistent understanding. Like, this is how we should play every night. Because the Wizards, while their defense can be bad there were like well, we had two stops in a row at one point and i just about fell out of my chair because it's never that doesn't happen a lot it was it was i was, I was like that's defense is, is that what do they call that defense my god it's beautiful why don't we do it more often you know just like <laughs> actually shocked but yeah uh it was overall a great game but we have to look at the dangerous negatives because we almost didn't win this game. It was only a three-point win. And depending on how some of those calls go, we could have lost this game very easily, especially after that, I want to say the second quarter or third quarter where Tyler Hero and and Bam were just deciding, okay, so like every time I shoot, it's going to go in. I don't care. I'm going to throw it up. And literally I could throw it from like the moon. It's going in. And I was like, oh no, here it goes. And naturally... The negatives, when you look at Brooks's coaching, like I said before, like I'm sure other Wizards fans consistently, consistently, consistently will say, we will win in spite of Brooks's bad decisions. Because, oh yeah, before I forget, before I forget, Troy Brown Jr. actually played, but I think that can fuel, I, can, I think that can flow into the negatives a bit, so let me get back to the original point. When it comes to Brooks's decisions, specifically rotations, lineups, adjustments, <laughs> in terms of adjustments, we have no adjustments. When Brooks makes a decision, it is usually at the, at the, at the detriment of the team. And what I mean by that is, you have someone like Lopez is playing badly, and you go, okay, we should sub him out, which we did last game. We put Lynn in, and then, oh no, 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 we didn't, Never mind. Lynn barely played the Blazers game, but this game he played a lot. We, we, we take out, we, t we would take, like, logistically, you take out Lopez and you go, okay, he's not playing well. I have two other centers. Because, you know, you would think um, if someone's playing well, you keep them in. And 
if they've been playing consistently well for two games, keep them in. If you've noticed, I haven't mentioned Mo Wagner. And that's because Mo did not play this entire game, despite being the reason that we've been in these last two games and the reason we won that Nets game are part of the reason because he brought us back when we were down really bad <laughs> against them. He gave us energy when we were down bad against the Blazers. So you would think, you would you would take your brain and you would go, okay, good play equal more time on court. With Brooks, for whatever inexplicable reason, this is not the case. If you are playing well and your name is not Bradley Beal or Russell Westbrook, then you could just be on the bench for like three straight. If anything, it's mainly young players. It's mainly young players. I shouldn't say that it's just anyone. It's mainly young players because... As I mentioned earlier, Troy Brown Jr. actually played today, and he played really well. And it sucks because I know that even though I stated that he played really well, we saw him play really well, he was even put in for the last possession, next game, he could just not play at all. Like Mo Wagner. Because Mo Wagner played well, and you would think that you would keep him playing. And that is something that i've thought about when we've looked at some of these players who are not playing as well when they come back in because troy brown jr to his credit really has been getting yanked around when it comes to this rotation and he decided to just come out and say i'm going balls to the wall and i'm not going to even think about if i'm playing next game but it's really it's a big problem with brooks is that he does not play you even if you play well and if you if you're a young player and you're someone who needs to get in a rhythm that really messes up any kind of rhythm that you could establish. And so that messes up your development because if you're not getting consistent play time, how are you supposed to get better? And so that's why I try to be a little more, I try to be a little kinder towards like Bonga or Robinson or Cassius Winston, I guess, because these players probably, they, they have these flashes, but we don't really get to see anything consistent from them be probably because they get yanked so often they don't know when they're going to play another game and so you go out there you're kind of nervous and it's like okay it's the nba you know you gotta you gotta have some confidence but there is something to be said about the situation you're in and how that contributes to you being able to play well and brooks does not do that in fact on top of this if we're not talking about him hampering development he actively tries to lose us games i swear this man is trying to lose us games <laughs> Because when, so Ish Smith, another person, because I'm not even trying to think about Bertans, because Bertans, he hit some threes and he hit timely threes. So he, he, he wasn't, he still wasn't, you know, he was still, he wasn't as bad as the Blazers game. He had better moments. He's doing a little bit better. And I, and while I didn't mention this in the, the, the Blazers video, I do want to acknowledge the fact that I don't want him to do poorly. I'd rather him be hitting these shots because it's pretty much all we ask him to do and it's just necessary it's incredibly vital and it's necessary and so i'm hoping that he gets better but until he plays better he should not be getting as many minutes as he's getting that's the different that's an adjustment that you have to make is when one of your players is not playing well you take them out and ish smith is another example of this ish at times he can be really electrifying it's really, really frustrating to watch him dribble like 30 times and then just throw up a pull-up mid-ranger. It is the most irritating thing. I, I already know that we have an entire Russell Westbrook on the team, but before Russ was on the team, Ish was already doing a Russell Westbrook impersonation, at least on offense, when he would just he would just walk into the paint and he'd dribble for like five minutes and he'd take the shot and if he and if he if he drove he just drives in and then when there's like no option he like spins back out or he just throws it out to someone and he was doing that this game and he missed he missed like he missed like four layups and i was like okay you might want to just take him out and then he just kept forcing the issue and then he would just do pull-ups inexplicable pull-ups so you think take him out and then Troy Brown Jr. was playing well, so you keep Troy Brown Jr. in because Troy Brown Jr. is actually a playmaking wing. We have like 50 of them. At this point, we could like, we have a wing factory. It'd be crazy if we just ran Troy Brown Jr. at point, Beal. You could probably put Denny at the three, Rui at the four, and then, you know, pick between Mo Wagner and Alex Lynn. That would be a pretty neat lineup. And at, at, at times, we were running that. Or no, I don't think we ran that. But we were running a decent lineup and 
And when Ish and Bretons come in, it's like, okay, hopefully we can survive this. And to our credit, we did. And like I said, Bretons didn't play as poorly as he did in the Blazers game. So riddle me this, right? We're in a really close game. Your, your good players are playing. Why at the last minute, the last minute of the game, you for inexplicably, it's a word I'm just going to keep using forever with Brooks. For some reason, Brooks decides to put Ish and Bertans back in the game. And our offense ends up being an Alex Lynn 3 that clanks. And then an Ish Smith pull-up that clanks. Instead of doing anything slightly creative. Because they were the Heat were constantly trapping Beal. And instead of us running anything different... <laughs> We just kept letting them do that. Somebody mentioned that it'd probably be a prudent idea. I don't know. Maybe let Denny like run some offense to throw the heat off. Like, oh, they're not just gonna keep spamming dribble handoffs and like a like a little a fake fake screens and stuff. They're just gonna keep doing it. I guess we'll just keep trapping and forcing turnovers. <laughs> Dang. And it was crazy because actually the Heat and Wizards finished with the same amount of turnovers. But we got the win, despite all of that. So I'm not disappointed i'm just worried because brooks is i feel like i feel like brooks is gonna take this as justification for his decision because it just happened to work like i keep saying this team is going to win in spite of the coach not because of the coach because the coach is a horrible tactician terrible at development and has no sense for in-game rhythm whatsoever so cool that we won this game we now have to follow that up with the second game against the heat who are inevitably going to adjust and actually have a really good coach and have good players um unfortunately they've been dealing with a lot of injuries and same as the blazers and they just lost avery bradley in this game to a right calf strain hopefully he'll be okay hopefully they get their guys back same like i wish that for any team i'd, I'd love to beat teams at full strength it, it, it always feels a little weird but for the wizards you take the wins you get you you take any win you can get especially when we not only have to beat the miami heat and eric spolster but we got to beat the miami heat eric spolster and scott brooks <laughs> so cool victories they're they're nice like i said i'm, I'm still i'm still like oh what but but I, I guess I guess I guess uh, I guess Wizards can they can they can cook a bit they can cook a bit I feel like Brooks probably just makes TV dinners, but you know, Wizards can maybe you know fillet my you know a little bit of fillet my <laughs> Well, this guy says, looks like the Wizards know the proper spell to survive a heat wave. Let's see if they can. Do it twice. And if they do it twice, that'd be just as nice. We'll see. Please watch.